Okay, uh, welcome to the next episode of Juicy Bits. This is going to be a big one. This is going to be one of the most important ones as far as uh, your success in the King of Fighters 13. Um, I want to take the next topic and I'm going to split it up into three separate videos. Um, and that is the neutral game in King of Fighters. What exactly you should be doing and various mechanics and things you need to know about when both characters are just standing up. Neither one of you has knocked the other down. All of you have all of your movement options available to you what you should be doing the entire neutral game okay so this will be one of three different videos that will help you with your neutral game this one will be about projectiles okay. projectiles in KOF are very different than they are in other 2D fighting games and what you need to know first of all is that there are two basic types of projectiles okay there are two basic types of projectiles. Um, not every character has a projectile, like say, in a Mortal Kombat or an Injustice type game. Not everyone has one. And not everyone that has a projectile has access to both types of projectiles. But distinguishing between the two types is what's gonna help you improve, okay? Now, I want you to notice that right now on the screen, there's an Athena on the left and on the right. The Athena on the right is throwing the hard punch version of her Psycho Ball. The Athena on the left is throwing the light punch version of the Psycho Ball. And these are the two distinct types, okay? Athena has access to both. The fireball on the right starts up faster, okay? I want you to notice as I do this one more time, this crouching light kick, in case you're curious, is zero on block. So we jump at the same time, and we start our projectiles at the same time. Okay? The hard punch version starts up faster, and it also travels faster. Notice that it's gonna get there way before the light one does. Okay, now obviously these are gonna destroy each other, but the idea is the hard punch fireball starts up faster and it travels faster. The light punch fireball starts slower and travels slower. But why would you wanna do the light one? Well, here's why. Noticing that both of these characters are neutral jumping right after their fireballs, okay? The light punch fireball recovers faster. Because it recovers faster, there's things you can do, okay? The light fireball, because it is slow and because it recovers fast, gives you the opportunity to start an offense, okay? If your opponent actually blocks it, you can follow it in because it recovers fast. So this might be similar to, say, Guile's Sonic Boom in, say, like a Street Fighter game. You recover quickly so you can follow it in and get your offense started, okay? Now, what you need to know is you need to fight the urge to jump over it, okay? And here's why. If you try to jump over this fireball, a light fireball, a slow-moving fireball, then the person who threw it has already recovered by the time you're jumping over it, okay? What this means is they're going to get a free anti-air of some kind. I mean, maybe you'll luck out with a trade or something. But it is absolutely easy. It's child's play. It's just a matter of reactions, okay? If you see someone throw a slow-moving fireball at you, you cannot jump after they've thrown the fireball. If you do, then what's going to happen is they're going to anti-air you, or at the very least, they will be able to move before you, and good players are not going to fall for jump-ins at this timing, okay? You need to get used to not jumping over fireballs on reaction so much in King of Fighters, okay? So I have, uh, the attacker is going to have multiple ways to deal with that situation. They could just anti-air you, you know, but the whole point is that you are under their control in that situation. <clears throat> Okay. And similarly, if you do block one, you know, as I'm showing you here, you will be in block stun if you do block one of these slower fireballs and they can follow it in just like a sonic boom. What that means is if you block it or if you jump over it, that's sort of a bad situation either way. And this is what's unique about the KOF projectiles. You can start an effective offense with it because you get good frame advantage if you follow it in. But they have to be a certain distance away. I want you to notice... I want you to notice... Oh, this one more time. Okay. 
I want you to notice that if you block a light fireball a little bit closer to the opponent than, say, far away, okay? If, if you take the screen and you say, you know, there's half screen, there's, there's, there's two-thirds screen, and there's full screen or so, the different distances you can be from your opponent, if you can block this fireball closer, then that means that the frame advantage is going to go away faster, okay? Generally speaking, the slow-moving fireballs are not going to give much or any frame advantage if you block them close to the opponent. So try to block, block them close to the opponent, because if you try to jump over it too late, or if you block it from far away, either situation is going to be bad for you. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something, but you know what, I won't. <laughs> now, that's the slow fireball in a nutshell. In order to counter the slow, the slow fireball, In order to counter the slow fireball, you need to jump at the same time or before this fireball gets thrown. Nope, wrong spacing. There we go. Okay, because the slow moving projectile recovers so fast, you have to make a read, you have to make that call. If you think someone's gonna throw a projectile in a second, then jump now because otherwise you might not be able to do anything about it other than block it or perhaps try one of the other options and I'll go over those options in just a second but the only consistent way to beat this fireball is to of course jump over it but you have to read it jump before they throw it or at the same time if you jump after they throw it then you will be too slow this is the major difference between this and other 2D fighting games now that's the slow fireball but the fast one the fast fireball, you can think of it like a poke. Think of it like a very fast normal that reaches fast that reaches farther than the other normals. Like, look at Athena's normals here. Her farthest reaching normal is her standing hard kick, right? But let's say I want to poke you. Like, you're far away, and I'm like, I really want to poke you, but I don't want to move towards you. Well, the fast fireball might be an idea here. Of course, you could just jump at them, so don't forget about that. Okay? But these fireballs... If you remember from earlier, they have more recovery. They start faster, and the fireball itself travels faster, but they have more recovery. So, even if you jump... Oh, <laughs> there we go. Even if you jump just a little bit... Um, let's put really like this. Even if you jump after it started up... Because of the extra recovery on the Fierce Fireball, you'll still be able to get there in time. Okay? I was actually holding back there. Let me go ahead and turn on my input display just to emphasize. Okay? So with the Fierce Fireball, because of that extra recovery, you could read it and jump before or at the same time that the Fireball is thrown, but there's a little bit more lenience, and even if you jump after the Fireball is thrown, you can still get in there and punish the Fireball. Okay? Yay! Okay, so, slow fireballs, fast fireballs. If your character has an EX projectile, that may be a slow-moving fireball, it may be a fast one, it varies by character, okay? Okay, now, there's another thing that you can do against projectiles, you don't have to jump, okay? You could do an evasive maneuver, a roll, so to speak. Okay? Remember that when you do a roll, you are invincible fully to all attacks until you come out of it, but you can be thrown. If you'd like more information on rolls, I have a video on rolls. Please go ahead and check that out. It's elsewhere on this YouTube channel. But you could roll past the projectile, okay? And depending on the timing of the roll, you may be able to punish something. Similar to a jump, if you can read the projectile, and assuming this is done right, let's see here. Now let's do it this way. Okay. Assuming you can read the projectile and you roll before they throw it, you might be able to roll past it and then go ahead and punish the recovery of the fireball. So if you want to try to find a way to, to get into a fireball user, besides jumping at them, you could try to roll at them. But it's important, just like with jumping, that you don't do it too late, especially against the slow-moving fireballs. Okay? 
Because if you do it too late, then what's going to happen is I'm going to recover in time and it's not going to matter. Okay? Because then I can just punish that, that roll. If you do roll it too late, it's not going to help at all. Ow! Okay? The, the whole point is... You have to respect the fact that on the light projectile they recover faster and it could start off So Don't try to jump or roll past it too much unless you are reading it and you do it before it happens, okay? Let's see here. Okay, but again, remember that the fast moving projectile, the fast moving projectile has more recovery and if you were try to roll past a fast projectile, it's more likely to be a neutral situation. You, you'll have more time to punish if you do roll it early, but it's more likely to be a neutral situation if you roll past or even neutral jump over the fast projectile. Okay? For the next couple of examples of what you can do against projectiles, I'm going to switch to two other projectile characters. What do I got here? You could jump a projectile. You could roll through a projectile, but of course, timing is dependent on both of those. Another option you might have is to go through it. Okay, and this is this is assuming that you have a move that is invincible enough. So, if you see a projectile is coming and you have something that's akin to say a full screen super. You know, you of course have the option of trying to go through it. And the funny thing is both of these characters can do this to each other. Let's see. There it is, okay. <laughs> so, you know, it, depending on your character, not every character will have one of these options, but you might have an option to go through the projectiles and usually it'll cost a meter, okay? Another option you have is to simply destroy the projectile. If you do have one, you could simply see that they throw a fireball and throw your own and just content to be stay there and have the fireballs trade off, okay? Similarly, if you do have an EX version, your version might be able to power through theirs. Oh crap! Okay, so EX projectiles, again, play into this, and that's another similar thing as to other 2D fighters, okay? And last, but certainly not least, okay, and this is a very important thing to realize, okay? I'm going to set the dummy to guard everything. I want you to look at the meters on the bottom of the screen. If you block projectiles, and if you block them all day, and if you say, you know what, I don't need to destroy your projectiles, I don't need to jump over them. I don't really need to roll past them. I'm just going to be content to block them all day. Technically speaking, it'll eat away at your guard gauge, but it, then no one's going to throw that many fireballs, okay? As long as you... I mean, somebody could, but the idea is you could just neutral hop over them or something if they become that annoying. But look at the meters here. Notice how much meter that Iori has right now. Whenever a projectile is thrown, usually the person who throws it doesn't build any meter right away. They only build meter if it actually makes contact, hit, or block. But if the defender just blocked the projectile, they always build more meter than the person throwing it. So, considering how important meter is in this game, the fact that they just gave me all this meter could be considered kind of important and kind of a mistake. One thing you can do against projectile users is just not deal with projectile users. Block them all day. The amount of chip damage that you're going to get does not compare to the amount of meter that they are going to get, okay? Let's let's just uh, do some quick math here. Let's turn on the display. A blocked fireball does 10 damage, okay? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. So I've dealt 140 damage to this Iori, right? Shh. 
But with that one bar, Iori can do a 300 damage or even more damage if you had a drive cancel combo to Kyo. If you just delay the mid-screen meeting, you know what? There's a good chance you're going to end up ahead in damage. You don't have to do with the projectile per se, but I hope that you understand now more of the options that you do have. The best general way to fight projectiles is to stay at a mid-screen distance. Stay at about this far away from your opponent. Okay? And very simply, you could just you could just bulldog. You could just block them all. Okay? And if you block them all, you're going to build a lot of meter. But if you want to make that call, you certainly could make that call. And if you do make that call, you can get a lot of damage. At least compared to other 2D fighting games, okay? So, I hope you understand a little bit more about projectiles. Um, this will be one of three separate videos covering the neutral game. Please look for the next two videos. They'll be coming in the next couple of days. If you want to learn more about King of Fighters 13, please check the description of this video. There will be some useful resources for you there. Check elsewhere on my YouTube, Dream Cancel, Orochinagi, the Shoryuken Wiki. Check the people who talk about the game. We're all very excited about King of Fighters 13 Steam Edition. I am. I hope you are. And I hope you watch the rest of my videos. Stick around, and I'll see you later. That was easy.